Good morning. 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 Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Let us stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I call to worship, Brother Cameron. Thank you. 
thank you for this beautiful day that we've never seen before. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us life, health, and strength, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank you for letting us be able to come here and fellowship with each other again, Lord Jesus. Yes. God, I want to say thank you for being God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being our Father. Yes. Our provider. Yes. Our protector, Lord Jesus. Yes. God, thank you for being Jehovah Rapha. Yes. Jehovah Nisi, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank you for being our friend when we are in need. Because yes. God, you are a friend in need, Lord Jesus. Yes. God, thank you for food, yes. tea, clean water to drink, Lord Jesus, yes. and clothes on our back. Yes. God, thank you for giving us our right mind, Lord. Yes. Thank you for showing yourself to us. Yes. Yes. And God, we'd like to ask right now that you come and fellowship with us, Lord Jesus, yes. and be in the sanctuary. Sing with the choir, Lord. And God, be in the pulpit, Lord. Yes, Lord. And God, Please send your presence to the nursing home. Send somebody to be with them, Lord Jesus. Yes. Bring them peace, bring them comfort. Yes. Because a lot of people in the nursing home have no more family. Yes. A lot of people in the nursing home, their family abandoned them there. Yes. Send someone there to tell them that you will never leave them, so yes. that they are never alone. Yes. God, go to the hospital, Lord Jesus. That's the word. Send your spirit of peace and comfort, but most importantly, your spirit of healing, Lord Jesus. Mm. Heal them, Lord Jesus. Heal them, God. And God, if it's not your will for them to be healed, send your, your spirit of, of comfort, Lord Jesus. Yes. Let them know that peace is with them as long as you, as they help you. Yes. God, go with the doctors and the nurses. Please let them prescribe the right prescription so that you may work your, your wondrous works, Lord Jesus. Yes. God, please let every surgery that they do come out right, Lord Jesus. Yes. There's no mistakes. And God, please go in the jail house, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let them know that even if society writes them off, if, as long as they have breath, you won't write them off, Lord Jesus. As long yeah. as they put their trust in you. Yeah. God, go overseas, Lord Jesus, where Christians are being persecuted mm -hmm. and they need help, Lord Jesus. Let them know that they're never alone because you're there. God, we ask for you today that you bless this country, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Please put them back on the right path, Lord Jesus. Because yeah. you may stray far away. But as long as we have breath in our body, yeah. you're still waiting for us, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Every person, everybody sins, but you're still there waiting and willing to take our sins away, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And all we have to do is just listen. God, be in this service and let someone take something powerful away. So that they may go out and tell them, tell the word about you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder, you you combat and cannot of Obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask, do not receive because you ask wrongly to send it on your passion. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with, with the world is enmity? Enmity with God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do, or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he hears, he hears jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell on us, but he gives more great grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the power, but gives grace to the humble. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. The word of God for the people of God. Let's be praying for the Lord. From all that dwell below the sky.
morning, church. Good morning. It is so good to see each and every one of you here today. Do we have any visitors? And if so, would you please stand so that we may acknowledge you? I know three of the fellas over here are first times coming with us, so just come on, stand up, and wave your hand at the people so they can see who you are. Come on. You don't have to be afraid. Come on. Or at least wave your hand in the air. Just wave your hand in the air. Well, let me see who you are. Let me see. Yeah. Stand up, let me see. There we All right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, I forget your name. She are also two new ones who just came today. Amen. 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 All right. Do we have any praise reports? And if so, go on and shout them out so we can praise God with you. Got a praise report. Uh, Solomon plays for the Pit Bulls Club in the city of Savannah in the City League and in the County League. They have placed first both in the County and the City League. And they have two more games or one more game before the championship. I'm pretty sure they're going to knock it out of the box. So, congratulations. This is not really a praise report, but I'm a, I think this is the right uh, place to put this in. On last Sunday, I looked out into the uh, congregation and I seen uh, just a bunch of young people. And I want you to let everyone look around. Look at all the churches that's around these, uh, around today. And the young people are leaving, going to do other stuff, going to join this and going to join that. But Greater Bethel in me is just flourishing with the young people. Look at the choir. Yeah. Look all in the, in, in the congregation. And I want to thank uh, Miss uh, Rachel uh -huh. for right. recruiting and retaining Amen. these young people for the choir and just everything get the young people. And our pastor Solomon Roberts Jr. for being a pastor that can that can pull that can preach the young people and he should have seasoned people. He can reach both of them. Because there's a lot of pastors out there, and I know Facebook don't get upset with me, but it's all right. There's a lot of pastors out there that's been preaching for years that can only reach the seasoned congregation. They can't reach, come down and reach the younger congregation to speak their language to inspire them. So, uh, Pastor Roberts, I know you might be cool, but uh, but you're doing a fantastic job with these young people and encouraging them. And Amen. I mean, all these baptisms I've never seen before in my life. Amen. So continue doing what you're doing. Uh, Sister Rachel, continue doing what you're doing. Great enough for Andy, continue doing what you're doing. Tuesday night, and the boys will play at 7.30 Tuesday night. 
here at Scribble County High School. Any others? All right. Do we have any prayer requests? Let us continue to pray for the bereaved families. Uh, continue to pray for Sister Michelle Rainey Roberts, Sister Sandra Long, Sister Michelle Mobley, Sister Erica Boogers, Brother Jerry Hunter, Mother Alfreda Williams, Brother Doug Atkins, Brother Ezekiel Roberts Jr., Brother Joseph Roberts, Sister Natasha Graham, Brother Keith Barnes Jr., Sister Lachey Cooper, Brother Javaris McCall, Sister Judy Roberts, Brother Chris Robbins, Sister Jennifer Roberts, Brother Ron Kelly, Sister Josephine Morris, Sister Stephanie Roberts, uh, Brother Charles Brown, all the children in school. And do we have any prayer requests from the floor? If not, let's have a moment of prayer. I'll pray this morning. We're coming from Brother Sheldon Roberts. By the hands. Father God, we want to. Uh, Help the sick and shut in this morning. Give them strength. Give them the, the, the power to make it through the next day. Give the family the give the family the strength and give the family the patience to come together and look after the sick and the shut in. Lord, your power and your wisdom is all we have sometimes. And with your guiding and with your prayers and with your strength encourage each and every one of us to look after the sick go out and visit for some time a lot of times they don't have anyone to turn to just your presence lord just your presence is all some of these individuals need in your name we pray amen, amen. all right the announcements are as follows so the past couple of weeks or every other couple of weeks I've been announcing about our church breeze account which will allow us to keep track of our members as well as your contributions through ties in church with uh, greater accuracy and so this QR code will allow you to fill out a survey so that you can be uh, so that I could make you a member of our breeze account so you can start keeping track of your contributions I'll be putting up QR codes around the church you might see a couple of them today um, but there will be QR codes all around the church for you to fill these out so that I can start creating your um, profile on the Breeze account. If you're not so tech savvy to scan the QR code, just find me and I'll help you create your Breeze account. Um, we're trying to get 100% uh, participation from everyone in the church so that everyone has their uh, profile on Breeze so that we can streamline our process with keeping up with your contributions. All right, so if you want to take a moment now to scan the QR code, go ahead and scan it. If you have trouble, just see me after church, and I'll gladly help you set up your um, account. All right. Hmm? Oh, also, with the QR codes, I have a QR code for the member's handbook, which I forgot to put up on the screen today. Find me after church, and you can scan that one as well. Those will also be posted up around the church and in the fellowship hall starting this week, next week. All right. Announcements are as follows. Men, please meet in the back for a meeting after church concerning our Men's Day program. The Men's Day program will be March 17th at 11 a.m. And uh, our presiding elder, Billy Graham McFadden, will be the proclaimer for that message. Our church anniversary is third Sunday in February. So next Sunday is church anniversary. Uh, Reverend Terry Alexander will be the proclaimer, and the taxation is $50. We hope to see all of our members out for our church anniversary. Our quarterly conference will be Monday, February 19th at 6.30 p.m. Asbury AME Church will be having their annual missionary day, February 18th at 3 o'clock p.m. And Greater Gaines Chapel AME Church will be celebrating their 137th church anniversary Sunday, March 17th at 3 o'clock p.m. There is an AME Day at the Georgia State Capitol, which is happening tomorrow, February 12th, starting at 9.15 a.m. Then uh, The Georgia Conference CDMC, there will be a training and rehearsal at St. Paul AME Church in Vidalia on March 3rd, starting at 10 o'clock p.m. Um, I'm still holding community youth choir rehearsals on Saturdays from 4 o'clock to 5.30. All are welcome to come and join. Remember, there's nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. He loves you more than you'll ever know. John 3 and 16 proves it. Um, 
Can you help me go ahead and do the moment of black history? Or do you have Okay. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. 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 Um, I only I have a few announcements this morning. Um, on the fourth Sunday at eleven o'clock, our very own Jasmine Roberts has been asked to speak at Taylor Chapel on Dar 107 Darling Street. Savannah, Georgia. She's bringing a message for their youth. This is her second time. They loved it so much the first time. I asked them to come back and do it again uh, because the youth were so responsive. So just want to give uh, Jasmine a hand. Yeah. You know, God is using her to do great things, and we look forward to the great things God will do with her. Amen. Yeah. Um, Monday, after the third Sunday in this month, mm -hmm. what you see in the church, the wood around the walls, the wood around the windows, all of that will be going away. The interior of the church will be renovated. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, if you would like a piece of history, You can get a piece of the wood that's in the church if you would like. I ain't selling it for $10. <laughs> you remember you get it for free. Amen. Amen. That's just some people are so historically inclined, they like to get the things that, that will no longer be. Amen. 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 Uh, and I have an idea for a piece of our wood as well. Amen. 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 Um, at this time, I want to ask um, Sister Sylvia Roberts to come to the front of the church. Amen. Amen. Um, the reason why I'm asking her to come is because it has to do with all of her grandchildren. All right? Amen. Now, when they were baptized, uh, we did not have the certificates. Uh, we had to order some, but now we have them. This certifies that Lance Larkin was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on the 26th day of November 20 of November 2023, Great Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church of Savannah, Georgia. Reverend Solomon Roberts Pastor. Langston Larkin, 7 M. Goldwater, Isabel R. Brown, and Josiah R. Brown. Amen. Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. I do have two others, but I, I was looking for them this morning, but they did not come. This is uh, Julian Jamel Nelson and uh, Christian Phoenix Grant. Uh, Christian is in Atlanta. Julian uh, is probably with his mother. They probably had other obligations this morning, but when they come, we will uh, distribute their uh, certificates as well. And for all of you who were recently baptized and you do not have a certificate, please see me directly at the service and we will uh, take care of that as needed. Well. Amen? Amen. 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 Are there any other announcements or anything anyone would like to add at this time? Uh, uh, yes, sir. In, in recognition of the time, here's a great month. We've got one thing I want to share. Because you probably were born before 65. All at school, you probably want to do is integrate with that. Today, today a big event is that you're watching the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You're looking at Patrick Mahomes and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Years ago, with no such thing as a black quarterback. You're not allowed to do that. Mr. David, uh, Sheldon, you, you, you people have to teach you. I've seen some people, there's no way they're going to let a black person teach their child. Mm -hmm. 
and everything, and everything you go do, do teaching that child will be scrutinized. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're talking about. And it's hurtful. You choose a profession, a profession, and somebody don't even recognize you. This talk down on you. But all the years you spent in school, college, and everything you studied, they don't recognize you. So today, now everybody's on the bandwagon. Black is beautiful, black is good. You want to watch it for the Super Bowl today and everything. For years ago, I remember we had with Doug Williams. They probably gave him a heart. They gave him a heart. So if you ever played high school sports and played on a team where it just got integrated, that, that was hard. Yeah, we put the, the white players out there, the one the black played, you know, like, you, you couldn't play. Just make you sit on the bench. Mm -hmm. And I seen so many times, it was a lot of confusion, a lot of there was confusion in there. You seen the time you're playing on a football team, and the guy feel like they're missing the block, missing the tackle, and not time fighting for breakout on, on the football field during the game. You would be fighting the other team, Teammate fighting them, fighting them, fight people on your own team. You know, it's just, uh, so this morning we're celebrating Black History Month. We've come from a long way. Amen. So a lot of you young see all the you ever saw was in a great place. Mm -hmm. Be in the classes where it didn't, it was segregated with different black. We come from a long way. Today, the Super Bowl and thing, look at this, that, things like that. Think about it. Years ago, it wasn't like that. No black quarterback, mm -hmm. no black coach allowed to coach anybody mm -hmm. unless it's another black player. Mm -hmm. So we come from a long way. I just want to remind you about that. Amen. 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 December 11, 2000, in Augusta, Georgia, he pursues, pursued a dual major in computer science and theater at Georgia Southern University, guided by the unwavering support of his parents, Barbara and Dennis Roberts. On February 10, 2024, he etched his names in the annals of Georgia Southern University's history by becoming not only the first black student, but the first student ever to send second place in the prestigious Irene Ryan Regional Scholarship Competition. Among 112 talented students selected by the KCACTF, which is the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival, um, he emerged as one of the final two contenders showcasing remarkable talent, dedication, and resilience throughout the competition. This landmark achievement stands as a testament to his unparalleled commitment to excellence and his unwavering pursuit of his passions. That is a moment in black history. Amen, amen. Ain't nothing wrong with some new black history, amen? Amen. We know Martin Luther King, now the next. Yeah. So join our reading. We know all of those people, but let us be introduced to someone new. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, at this time, we have kids call. Christian oh. Education Department. All right. Come on down, children. If you're under 18, we got some questions for today. And as I warned y'all, last second Sunday is all about the judges of Israel. Yeah. 
service. Yeah. You can use the Bible. Yeah. The book of Judges. All the questions are coming from the book of Judges. I mean, you can also use your resources. Sit beside an adult who you think knows the answer. I know a lot of these adults know the answers. Use your resources. All right? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? The book of Judges is the sixth book of the Bible. Seventh, I mean. Seventh book of the Bible. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? What, what book is it? Judges. Judges. All right. Okay, we're going to move on. Judges, the book of Judges, seven foot of the Bible. Your first question is, how many judges appointed by God are mentioned in the book of Judges? 198. Not 198. 12. 12 is correct. 12 is correct. 12. 12. 12 is correct. All right. Now this one, the next question is a trick question. So it's 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 more money if you get it right. All right. This man, he decided that he would appoint himself as the judge and king of Israel. He dominated Israel for three years. He was the son of Gideon. He killed all his brothers in an attempt to seize power. His name starts with the A. Abimelech. Stand up, stand. Abimelech. Abimelech. Abimelech is correct. Abimelech. He was Gideon. He was the son of Gideon, who was the fifth judge. He killed all seventy of his brothers in an attempt to. Claim control and rule over Israel. Seven zero. Seven zero. Yeah, they, they was many of them. Okay, next question. Who was the first judge of Israel? Sam of the Not Sam Gardner. You gotta sit down. O.C. Mean Hill. 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 O.C. Mean the next question is, hey, 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 you gotta let me get the question out first. Y'all went to Sunday school, y'all know the answers, just wait for it. All right, the next question is, y'all gotta wait for me to finish the question though. The next question is, this man was the second judge of Israel. He went up against the fat king of Moab, whose name was Eglon. He did. Thou shimmer her. Who said it first? Eglon. is correct. Eglon is correct. Eski, where you looking? I couldn't tell. It was. I think it. I think it was black shirt. Black shirt. I think it was black. <laughs> Stand back so far. So All right. The next question is: This judge was the third judge of Israel. He slew 
600 Philistines with the oak scud. Pause, pause. Dylan stood up first. Dylan, what was your answer? The answer that they just said. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Delilah. Uh, Samuel. Not Samuel. 
so amazing. Amen. I mean, you know, God is so amazing. Amen. He was God is so amazing. He's done so much for us. We can't even count the amount of things that God has done for us. Where He's placed us. How He has placed us. Amen. We thank God for being so amazing this morning. Amen. I don't intend to hold you long. Just allow me some time to reason with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't get mad if this is not a long sermon, but this is a, a sermon today that helps us learn how to become a little closer with God. Is that all right? All right. Amen. 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 First John, the fourth chapter, and the first verse. First John, the fourth chapter, and the first verse. When you get it, say amen. First John, the fourth chapter, the first verse. If you, if you can't uh, find it in your Bibles right now, just remember first John, the fourth chapter, and the first verse. Amen. And it reads, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Amen. The word of God for the people of God, bless be the name of the Lord. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Neighbor, do you test the spirit? Look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, you should test the spirit. Put your hands on yourself. Tell. Oh, self. From now on, I will be testing the spirit. Give God some praise. Amen. 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 Testing the spirit. Testing the spirit. Testing the spirit. Ah, uh, there was a preacher sent to visit a member of the community. And he invited him to come to church on a Sunday morning. It seems that this man was a producer of fine peach brandy. And he told the preacher, the only way I will attend your church service on Sunday is if you admit in front of the congregation that you have drunk some of this fine brandy. The preacher agreed and he drank up. Sunday morning, the man visited the church and the preacher recognized him from the pulpit. The preacher looked out into the crowd and he said, I see Mr. Johnson has joined us here this morning. Y'all give him a hand clap of praise and everybody began to clap publicly for him. And he said, I just want to thank him publicly for his hospitality this week. And especially for the peaches he gave me and in the spirit in which they were given. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The moral of the story, it is not what you say, but it is how you say it. Amen. Amen. Testing the spirit. Amen. Dealing with spirits is a delicate subject. Why? Because all spirits are not the same. Amen. The dictionary gives a plethora of definitions in reference to what the spirit is. The dictionary says that a spirit is an attitude or principle that inspires, animates, or pervades. It says that a spirit is a divine, inspiring, or animated being or influence. It says that a spirit can be a demon or an angel. The dictionary goes on to say that it can be a feeling or a mood. It says that it can be your soul regarded as separating from the body at death. It also says that a spirit can be the Holy Spirit, which is the Trinity. So it's safe to say that the spirit can defini definitively be classified. 
crucified in several different areas. Amen? Amen. And today it is imperative that we know the spirit that we deal with in our daily living. A lot of us, we deal with many, many different spirits. There are many different spirits that's referenced in the Bible. Some of us, we recognize these spirits, and others of us, we just go on about our day not seeing or recognizing anything that's taking place in our lives. The spirit of fear, power, love, and the sound mind is given to us in 2 Timothy, the first through and the seventh verse, first chapter, seventh verse. It says, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what God has given us. Amen? Amen. So you can't confuse that with anything else. God did not give you the spirit of fear, but he gave you the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. That's how you know that came from God. Amen. 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 The foul spirit, the dumb spirit, the deaf spirit, Mark 9, 25 says, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Amen. 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 That is not of God. That is a foul spirit. Dumb and deaf spirit. Amen. The spirit of heaviness. Isaiah 61 and 3 says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. In other words, we carry a spirit of heaviness and sometimes we got to go to the Lord to ask him to relieve us of the spirit. There is also the unclean spirit. Matthew 12, 43, Luke 4 and 33 talks about this. When the unclean spirit is going out of man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Some of us, we deal with unclean spirits every day. People that come around you that don't know how to behave. Amen. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now there's a difference between the two. First John 4 and 6 says, we are of God. He that knoweth God, hear us. He that is not of God, heareth not us. Hereby know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen. So in other words, knowing right from wrong. Knowing the truth from a lie. Amen. Spirit of infirmity. Luke 13 and 11 says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And was bound together and could, could in no wise lift herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, woman, y'all have heard this one before, mm -hmm. thou art loosed from thou infirmity. Oh, yeah. In other words, the thing that's binding you up, the thing that's keeping you broken, the thing that's keeping you down, the way that you're feeling, the heaviness, it is gone. Amen. Then there's the spirit of the Antichrist. One that is becoming more and more popular every day. One that is all over social media and beginning to filter its way into the word of God. One that is beginning to filter its way into the church. One that's beginning to filter its way into God's people. First John 4 and 3 says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Amen. Amen. I am sure that you heard somebody say that you don't need to go through Jesus to get to God. Amen. Amen. Spirit of the Antichrist. I am sure that you heard somebody say that you don't have to believe in Jesus. 
Jesus. Spirit of the Antichrist. You heard somebody say there's no such thing as Jesus. Spirit of the Antichrist. We are in a world filled with spirits. And God told us we would have some issue with these spirits when it pertains to our daily living. Some of us have never heard what he said. Some of us have, read, have never read what he said. But today, the word says this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we need to understand that we need Jesus to break through the strongholds of life. Many people today are walking around with repairable issues. And because of the spiritual warfare we are not aware of, we have a constant everyday battle with spirits because they know some of us don't have Jesus. Some of us, we claim to have Jesus, but some of us never even call on the name of Jesus. Some of us claim to love Jesus, but some of us never even talk to Jesus. The Bible testifies that Jesus name, in Jesus name, that the demons will flee. My question to us today, how many of us have Jesus? Not just able to say his name, but have Jesus in your heart. Not just able to say his name, but believe Jesus for ourselves. Not just able to say his name, but knows Jesus in the pardon of our sins. Not just able to say Jesus, but without a shadow of a doubt, we have a personal relationship with him. I want you to know today that Jesus is the answer to all of our issues. Jesus is the answer or the key to the locked doors. We have false prophets that claim to be the way. We have fake preachers that claim to be the way. Deceitful, self-proclaimed apostles who claim to be of the spirit but are wolves in sheep clothing. Second Corinthians 11 chapter the 13th and the 15th verse in the Bible it warns us that such men are false apostles. Deceitful workmen disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is of no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Therein will correspond with their deeds. So the reason for testing the spirits, for testing all religious teaching, is to see if it is truly from God, or is it a lie from Satan and his servants. Amen. Here in the Bible, John expresses some thought for us. John simply tells us do not believe every spirit. Uh, in other words, there are going to be some people who come teaching some things out of the Bible, so they say. But it is up to us to learn how to discern those things. Some of us, we hear people say things that come out of the Bible, but there are some things that are being said in pulpits all over the world that are not found in your Bible at all. Therefore, you must test the Spirit by the Holy Spirit. See, whether it is from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. Some people claim to be preachers. Some people claim to be teachers. Some people claim to be evangelists. Some people claim to be prophets. Some people claim to be apostles. Some people have not ever come in contact with God, but they want to teach us how to be children of God. Bible says, by this you know the spirit 
of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is from God. So in other words, you got people out there who would tell you, ain't no need for you to believe in Jesus because he can't save you. You got to believe in the most high and the most high only, only he should you believe in. That is not so. The Bible says that through Jesus is the only way for you to get to the Father. You can't take one without the other when the, when the other is talking about the one. Confusion. Yeah. And every spirit that has not confessed Jesus is not from God. Amen. Amen. You got some people that just can't say that Jesus is of the Father. Right. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Don't act like the Antichrist spirit isn't already here because it's here. You can just scroll through your Facebook page. You can scroll through just about anything and they'll tell you, you're Egyptians and you're this and you're that and there was no God and there is no God, but I tell you, Jesus said, I know that there's a God upon high that sent his only begotten son down for the sins of the whole world. There's too much evidence that says otherwise. Little children, this is the Bible talking to us. All those who have accepted Jesus as your personal say, here, little children, you are from God. How many of you know that this morning? And I have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So in other words, if you got Jesus in you, you have a greater thing that is in you than the person who's walking around dealing with the worldly things every day. You got somebody you can go to. You got somebody you can confide in. You got somebody you can go and ask for help when you need it. The Bible says they are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. Amen. So those people who, who, who we get upset about because you just can't reach them. You've been trying for a long time to talk to them about God. You've been trying for a long time to let them know that God is real, that Jesus is his son, that he left the Holy Spirit as a comforter. You've been trying for a long time, but it seems like you're talking to a brick wall. Brick wall, the world has them. And sometimes it's hard for the world to let them go and for them to let go of the world. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We still have power and authority to do some work for God. Just because they're in the world don't mean that they can't come back into the sheepfold. Just because they're in the world don't mean they're lost without a cause. Just because they're in the world don't mean that they can't turn their life around. It is up to you and me, brother and sister, to go let them know that they can still be saved. That there is a God that sits high, looks low, that he gave his only begotten son. That died on the cross for them. They still got a right to the tree of life. All they have to do is extend their hand and accept Jesus as their Lord. We are children from God. We come from God. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. God gives you a spirit of discernment. In other words, God gives you the opportunity to know right from wrong. So when you see that person that's trying to fool you with the spirit of the Antichrist, you know that they are wrong. You stay right. And you move on. And you keep going. And you press onward towards your goal. Because God has put something in you that helps you when you are in need. God puts something at you that helps you know the difference between right and wrong. God has put something in you. We are his children. And we should carry ourselves as such. I thank God this morning. 
of this afternoon that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. And there's so much evidence. We just got to look for it. There's a lot of people who say all the time, I can't find no evidence about Jesus. I can't find no evidence. But there are so many people who have been saved in the name of Jesus. I can't find no evidence. But there are so many people who were healed in the name of Jesus. I can't find no evidence. But there were so many people who had demons eradicated from their body in the name of Jesus. I can't find no evidence. There were people who were raised from the dead and have a testimony in the name of Jesus. But we can't find any evidence. Many people have called on other names and nothing has taken place. Many people have called on other names. No one has gotten raised from the dead. Many have called on other names. None have been healed from their sickness. But there is power in the name of Jesus. As we stand all over the sanctuary, test the spirit by the spirit. The doors of the church are open. There may be someone who is out of the ark of safety. There may be someone who wants to give their heart to God. We ask that you come now. Put your hand in my hand and give your heart to God. But there be one today. Maybe there's one who wants to be baptized. Maybe there's one who wants to join the church. We give you the opportunity to come. Maybe there's someone who wants to be saved. Come don't wait for tomorrow, for tomorrow be too, be too late. Don't be afraid. If you don't want to come by yourself, ask one of your friends to walk with you. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, will you walk with me? Look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, will you walk with me? Don't be afraid. Come. There may be someone who's been praying for a long time. You feel like your prayers are just not being answered. Come.